his language games is, is a very sort of famous idea in philosophical investigations and it gets applied to lots of different areas. Could you say a little bit about um, about what he means when he talks about a language game and, and how that's quite different to the idea of logical languages having reference with bits of them and that sort of thing? Yeah. So you know, I said that the investigations is rejecting some bits of the tractatus, but maybe not rejecting as many as some commentators think. But this is one point on which undoubtedly he's shifted from tractatus. Because the argument for the solipsism in the tractatus is an argument whose key working part is the claim that there is such, such a thing as the language, the language which alone I understand. Um, famously mistranslated in the first English edition which with the translation by Ramsey, um, uh, for some reason Wittgenstein didn't spot when he checked the translation um, that it, it, the translation would come out as the language which I alone understand. So the German is die allein ich verstehe, which alone I understand. Mm. And Ramsey had made that which I alone understand. So it sounds, if translated as which I alone understand, it sounds as if he's talking about language which I'm the only person who understands. It would be a private language. Right? Mm. It's not. It's the language which is the only language that I understand. So yeah. the idea is that, that the key working part of the Tractatus argument is that there is such a thing as language. Right? I confront the world with language as a single unified thing. That's the, the view which investigation rejects um, because of a, very, a set of, of arguments in the first part of the book which have tried to show that that view <coughs> can't work. So what replaces it is the notion of a language game. So instead of the language which alone I understand, what I have is a patchwork of sub-languages, or language games, a patchwork of practices, each of which has its own um, rules, its own way of understanding. But there is no such thing in the world of investigations as a single unified whole which all my language games share. So there's no one thing called language. There's just uh, uh, language is now a, a, um, a cluster concept um, or family resemblance concept. Is the hmm. Can you give some ideas of how that might work, just sort of help make it a little bit clearer? So let, let's say that, um, well, you've got different interests. So you, you, you like trains and you like philosophy. Um, and I'm sure you have other interests as well that I don't know about. And, and each of these sorts of domains of interest can come with their own vocabulary, uh, the sort of thing that you'd say in a, in, in a train enthusiast meeting would be different to the sort of thing you'd say at you know, the Moral Sciences Club or something. Um, and we've, we've talked personally as well about sometimes how, as a philosopher, especially a relatively highly trained one, how you can communicate to the person on the street some of these ideas in a way that makes sense to them. So is this an example of different language games? And if so, how do these different parts that may be in some ways that you can speak these different kinds of languages and the different sort of social things that go on with them. How does that sort of work as a, as a, as a theory, how they can be different, but together? Um, the answer in the investigations is that what binds them all together is something he calls our form of life. Then the problem is, well, what does he mean by a form of life? And I think his idea is that, in some sense, that's unsayable. So one of the controversies about the investigations is whether our form of life is just supposed to be the kind of thing that an anthropologist could tell you. Is it supposed to be just, what are human practices? Give us a list. And an anthropologist could go and study some community and compile a list which, the more they observe the community, the more comprehensible list we get and eventually they would have studied the the community in detail and you'd have a list and say right that's that's what our form of life is it's just it's what we do as humans and here's a description of it um 
my own view is that I don't think that is what he means by a form of life, because I think one of the things I think he's still carrying forward from the Tractatus is the idea that at some point you get to what's unsayable. You know, he, he uses the metaphor of, of digging and reaching bedrock. You know, this, he says our spade turns. You can't. You get to a point where you can't go any further. Um, I think that idea that at some point explanation stops. And you're left just having to shrug your shoulders and not say anymore. That's an idea that's in the Tractatus. I think that idea is still there. I mean, differently configured, but it's still there in some way in the investigations. Right. So, so the answer to your question, I think, in the investigation is that um, there's going to be a point when you can't really say what it is that unites all these language games and makes them collectively, um, what's distinctive about your community. So he certainly wouldn't think then there was some kind of meta-language at work that we can sort of ascend to and, and talk about them. Uh, right. in, yeah, okay. Because I, th I think that if he did say that, then he would flip into transcendental idealism again. Does he does does the philosophical investigation suffer from the same problem we discussed earlier, the Tractatus? Then that, in a way, because he is talking about language games, that if you get to the end, you realise he's trying to talk in a neutral way about all language games and how this works, and so he you may have to see that as a ladder that has to be got rid of as well. Or does that not happen with investigations? It doesn't happen explicitly. I mean, he doesn't use the. He doesn't recommend you to chuck the book away in quite the way that he does in the Tractatus. But I would say that the problem remains. I, I think his recognition of the problem remains. I think he still recognises the threat of transcendental idealism and he's still trying not to fall into it. But it's less clear in the investigations what his strategy is, I think, for avoiding it. Um, I mean, the other threat, of course, is that there is a way of trying to understand it which seems to lead to, to a kind of relativism. Because if what unites my language games is my form of life, and what unites yours is your form of life, and if your form of life is different from mine, isn't there a danger that we're not that when we dispute we're not really disagreeing? You can just say, "Well, you have your truth, I have my truth." Yeah. Now, I don't think it does lead to that relativism because I think that two things. First of all, your form of life and my form of life are plainly similar enough. But there's a huge amount of commonality such that we can understand each other so that I can just say, no, you're wrong, Nathan, right? As I have, of course, at various times in the past. <laughs> yes. Mainly about Frigg. But, um, you know, we do share enough. And I think that that can be a starting point. And I think for Wittgenstein, that was a starting point. But just as in the Tractatus, his transcendental argument in the Tractatus for the Existence of Simples, the Art of Substance, takes as its premise that we say things true or false about the world. I think in the same way in the investigations, he thinks we can take as a starting point that we do understand each other a lot of the time. So these, but, are, not, these are not ultimately incommensurable, but there, there may be degrees of incommensurability. So would, would, would it be the case that if you talk to someone maybe from a different period of time, if that were possible, or, or from a, a very different culture, there will be those uh, certain degree of incommensurability. Or maybe, like as we said before, uh, if you or I were trying to talk about uh, philosophy of language issues or, or metaphysical issues to just my children or just someone who's not, that, that, that it, is, it makes communication difficult? I don't know. I don't know where the cutoff point is. Yeah. Well, two things. I don't know where Wittgenstein thought the cutoff point was, and secondly, I don't know where I think the cutoff point is. I mean, 
the the datum we've got from Wittgenstein is his famous remark that if a lion could speak, we wouldn't understand it. Yeah. Why not? Answer, because the form of life of a lion is too different from the form of life of a human. Um, so, hang on, so this form of life, it sounds to me quite similar to something else we talked about before, which is almost like just the experience, the kind of what it is like to be a lion. But, but should, presumably form of life, is it something broader than that? Um, be, no, no. Because I think we, as a starting point, yeah, it's what it's like to what it's like to be human, as opposed to what it's like to be a lion. Or, yeah, I mean, here's an example example that might help. I remember once seeing a television program which tried to show what the world looked like to a cow, and the, the makers of this program seemed to be impressed by the fact that cows can't see straight ahead because their eyes are on either side. So what they did was they took a camera looking that way and a camera looking that way and they put them both on screen with a blurring, blurred bit in between. And they said, there, that's what the world looks like to a cow. And I thought when I watched this program, whatever the world looks like to a cow, I'm sure it's not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Well, because what's salient in the world to a cow isn't what's salient to us. So I don't know what the world looks like to a cow, but I'm guessing that things like, you know, grass is probably pretty salient in its worldview. Certain other things probably aren't salient at all. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, but of course, the, you know, at this point, I'll stop talking because... <laughs> I, I'm not a, you know, I'm, I, I don't do the, the, the physiology of vision, so I'm not an expert on that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to tread on things I may know nothing about. But you know, it's a, it's a it's a familiar fact that huge amounts of data get sent from our eyes into the brain, the vast majority of which just gets chucked away. Hmm. And there are lots, you know, lots of experiments on how much of what is sent from the eye just doesn't register. Um, so presumably, it's similar but different in the case of cows. Right? Mm, so mm. that's why we just do, we don't know what what's salient in the world to a cow. Ditto with a lion, and that's why if a lion could speak, we wouldn't understand it. Mm, mm. And that's why there is a fundamental mistake in Doctor Who. You know, the premise of Doctor Who is that the Doctor has a, a clever device that does kind of simultaneous Google Translate. So when he lands on, on a distant planet, he can understand all the beings. I think Star Trek has something similar, the Universal yeah. Translator. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's just an important mistake embedded in that because if we could land on one of these distant planets, we wouldn't understand the beings on that planet hmm. because what's salient in the world to them wouldn't be what's salient to us. And that's actually an important mistake because there is a kind of thought experiment some philosophers encourage us to do, which is the Martian thought experiment, you know, the how would a Martian understand our language? So we, we, we posit this helpful being who can observe our practices and try to interpret them, although they're not part of those practices. That's what the, the role of Martian plays in these thought experiments. And whenever I see those thought experiments, I always think, hang on, isn't there just a problem here? <laughs> that that the, the thought experiment is supposed to... Um, treat it as relatively unproblematic that the Martian can make some kind of understanding of what we're doing. Mm. Seems, at least according to Wittgenstein, that's problematic. 